Welcome to another children's book presented by Sandman Stories Presents. Today we have Gobo Lynx or Shadow Pictures by Ruth McHenry Stewart and Albert Bigelow Payne. Now a little bit on the authors. Ruth McHenry Stewart was born in Louisiana in 1849 and died in New York City age 67 in 1917. She was buried in New Orleans, Louisiana. Now she's from a very rich and powerful family. She's related to former senators and former governors of Louisiana, and she started writing stories and putting them out in 1888 in the New Princeton Review. She has a lot of stories out, The Golden Wedding and Other Tales, The Story of Babette, The Snowcap Sisters, A Farce, Holly and Pizen and Other Stories, Sonny's Father, The Cocoon, A Rest Cure Comedy, and Daddy Do Funny's Wisdom Jingles. As far as Albert Bigelow goes, he was an American author and biographer best known for his work with Mark Twain. Payne was a member of the Pulitzer Prize Committee and wrote in several genres, including fiction, humor, and verse. He was born in 1861 in New Bedford, Massachusetts, and died April 9, 1937, in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. This is a silly book all about ink blots making creatures. So again, that's Gobel Links or Shadow Pictures by Ruth McHenry Stewart and Albert Bigelow Payne. Okay, let's begin. Dedication To old friends with young hearts and young hearts growing old. Dear friends of our youth, should you happen to look at the curious things in this curious book, and should you with quizzical countenance ask the how and why of our curious task, we could truly reply to your query of why, to the smile on your lips and your questioning eye, that the work was begun in the spirit of fun, to amuse when the work of the daylight was done, and continued because we believe it would be amusement to such as were weary as we, to drift for a while among goblins and elves, or happily make shadows and rhymes for themselves. For though years have passed since we drifted apart, we're all more or less children at heart, and maybe yourselves and the youngsters twill please to dwell for an hour with such creatures as these. Now someone has said, in a moment of spleen, we cannot make pictures of what we've not seen, but such an assertion deserves only scorn, for the shape of the gobelink never was born. He comes like the marvelous mimes of our dreams, when one has been supping on salads and creams, and curious changes of vision take place. The horse may appear with an elephant face, the goat with a cane, and the goose with a hat, six legs on the dog, and two tails on the cat. We never can tell, though we're sorely perplexed, what shape will be shown to us, or what will come next. And these are the things that are Gobelinks do. Dear friends and dear children, we give them to you. The Gobelink and how to make him. Drop a little ink on a sheet of white paper. Fold the sheet in the center and then press the ink spots together with the fingers. All of the pictures in this book were made in this manner. None of them have been touched with pen or brush. A great deal of patience will only go to show that the Gobelink, as his name implies, is a veritable goblin of the ink bottle, and the way he eludes the artist's design proves him a self-made eccentric creature of superior imagination. It is hardly to be expected that the animals and birds of prey referred to under more or less familiar names in the accompanying rhymes will be strikingly correct as to anatomy, and because, as upon page 15, the elephants, or whatever they may be, happen to have each a row of interesting tails continuing along a full length of a spinal column, no unkind criticism should be made upon the ability of the overworked and conscientious artists, who would have made fewer tails if they could, and have added nothing to the price of the book on account of the undue liberality in the matter of casual appendages. In fact, the most unexpected and startling results will often occur, results grotesquely and strangely beautiful, well worthy of preservation. The authors of this book will be glad to receive a few examples of some of the more unusual gobelinks or shadow pictures that may occur to those interested in the amusement. They may be sent care of the Century Company. The Game of Gobelink Persons of all ages may obtain amusement out of gobelinks or shadow pictures, as they are called. The following is a very good method for playing the game. Let three of the company be selected by the hostess as judges. To each of the others, she then distributes five to ten sheets of paper, from which they must produce at least one completed picture and rhyme in a given length of time, say five minutes, at the end of which the hostess rings a bell and the judges proceed at once to take up the pictures. These are then passed upon by them, while the hostess is distributing a fresh round of paper, and the best two and the 
worst one are laid aside. Those whose pictures have been selected now act as judges, surrendering their places at the tables to their predecessors, and another lot of pictures and rhymes are made. The game is continued in this matter until the hostess announces the arrival of the time for the final judgment, or until a certain hour specified in the beginning. The three judges then, in office, now select one of the company as the reader, and such person selected shall take up his position in the strong light, and after reading the verses on each picture, shall display it in full view of all present. It should then be pinned to a suspended sheet or a screen, where it may be examined by all the company. This shall be continued until all the pictures selected by the judges have been treated and displayed. The reader then acts as chairman, and the company proceed to vote on them for first, second, and booby prizes. The Gobolink receiving the second largest number of votes for first prize is awarded second. The ballot for booby should be, of course, taken separately. Pictures should be signed or otherwise identified. Where a number are making pictures, it is well to seat them around a large table with an ink supply in the center. Jet blank ink should be used and a good quality of unglazed paper. The ink should not be too thin. The table should be protected from accident with several thicknesses of newspaper. A filled pen or tincture dropper may be used for supplying the ink. For a specially invited Gobolink party, the company may dress in a grotesque fashion, remembering only that both sides of their costume shall be the same, this being a feature of the peculiar Gobolink attire. No game could be more productive of amusement than Gobolink. Gobolinks The Drum Major a jolly little major of the drum. Behind him, all the shadow people come as he bravely leads the way for the Gobolink array with a bearing most important and his uniform so gay. Oh, it's very plain to see that he's the hero of the day, this jolly little major of the drum. The Somethings. A something met a something in the mists of Shadowland. They ran against each other and quickly came to a stand. And who are you? said something one. And something two said he. That's just the very question that at once occurred to me. The Bubblers these boys have just returned from school and now forget their troubles. They both are sitting on a stool and blowing crooked bubbles. The Jack of My Goblin a terrible creature of the ink bottle land. A jack of my goblin is he. The sea urchins made him to place on the sand and frighten the monsters that dwell on the land. They took a sea pumpkin and carved it by hand and lighted it up in their glee with a phosphorus fish from the sea. Now all the day long on the shore doth he stand while land loodles terrified flee. Oh yes, the terrified land loodles flee. The Friendly Chickens these chicks have been out in all weathers. They have little to show but pin feathers, but their friendship is strong, and they sing us a song, regardless of wherefores or weathers. They stayed at home. These chickens long debated on a costume for a ball, and became so much elated that they didn't go at all. The Unfriendly Chickens the saucy chicks, which here you see, know neither wrong nor right. They can't be good like you and me, who sometimes really do agree, so all day long they fight. The Butterfly How gaily flits the butterfly across the seas of clover. How blue the arching summer sky that hangs the country over. On wings of purple, brown, and gold, he drifts across the meadow. His harmless flight you may behold, from Yucatan to Yeddo. Dipsy Doodle. This is Little Dipsy Doodle, sometimes called the Great Kiodle. His relative. This is Dipsy Doodle's brother. They have ears like one another. A striking resemblance. Two Wigilums went for a walk one day by the shores of a shimmering sea, and one of them said to the other, I pray, now what's your opinion of me? Then the Wigilum looked at his Wigilus mate. My charming companion, said he, the things that I think I am loath to relate, you look so exactly like me. The Mask here is a curious mask. I don't know of whom or of what. I've never had courage to ask. A saint's I'm sure it is not. Human nature? Two rival Woodjums did declare that they must surely sever, but lo, that day they found that they were better friends than ever.
Red Riding Hood's Wolf Oh, this is the wolf that Red Riding Hood found when she came to her grandmother's bed. Her ears were so long, and her eyes were big and round, while her voice had a strange and a terrible sound. When she answered what Red Riding Hood said, for alas, the grandmother was dead, and little Red Riding Hood sprang with a bound, through the doorway and hastily fled. Oh my, in terror she hastily fled. Witch Broth Witches, witches in a tree, brew your broth of mystery. Snail and toad and lizard in it, tail of cat and tongue of linnet. Rabbit's foot and wing of bee, witches, witches, none for me. Just like other children. Two little goblins one day were sent to do the dishes, instead of which they ran away and fished for shadow fishes. They fished and fished and fished and fished, and but a leaf they caught, oh, and then they wished and wished and wished, they'd done the things they ought to. So by and by they homeward crept, with plumage drooping sadly, and there they bowed their heads and wept, because they felt so badly. A Sea Dance Two beautiful sponges one day joined hands with a haughty stingray, and away danced the three through the depths of the sea in a most irresponsible way. The Singers These ducks have voices sweet to hear, and frequently before us. They stretch their mouths from ear to ear, and sing to us in chorus. The Birds and the Wire Upon the quivering wire, as hearkening to a lyre, the sparrows gather at the break of day. Perhaps that vibrant string is tuned that they may sing an anthem to the glories of the May. A Hard Question Here are two pairs of funny beasts. I hardly know their habits. Perhaps they may be elephants. Perhaps they may be rabbits. In conversation they appear, withdrawn from one another, as if attempting to decide what name to give the other. The Moon Dance Two shadow colts one summer night did try to dance a jig because the moon was high, but the moon obscured its face, for she thought it was a disgrace, while the little stars were laughing in the sky. Prehistoric Animals Many creatures such as these, ere the dawn of history, on the land and in the seas, manufactured mystery. Mystery from mighty men, who like Dr. Drybone, bring them into form again, from a scale or a thigh bone. Graceful Polywogs Oh, the Polywog waltzes with wonderful grace, and he skates with a radiant smile on his face, while his arm in the air has the curve I declare of some beautiful creatures of Thrace. A South Sea Idol There lives an old god in the isles of the west, and a wonderful god is he, with a star on his brow and a star on his chest, while at left and at right, in their armor dressed, a dragon and knight on his shoulders rest, and he dwells in the great South Sea. Preparing for Winter these squirrels have paused to consider the fact that it is late in the fall, and time to lay nuts up for winter, if they would have any at all. The red squirrel hoards like a miser, but alas, the improvident gray, he's only a pauper of winter who scampers the summer away. The Bathers Adown the beach at Rockaway, three bathers one hot summer day, retired to while the hours away. Their minds were free, their hearts were light, the August sun was fierce and bright. They dived and swam from morn till night. The Bad Boy This little fellow misbehaved and gave the people shocks, until at last they were compelled to put him in the stocks. Brotherly Consolation a thingamabob got out of a job and went to consult his brother. Said his brother to him, Your chances are slim unless you go hunt up another. The Butterfly Man A very gay fellow was he, as gay as a mortal could be, and he fluttered about till at last he turned out a butterfly man as you see.
the transferred smile. Two little snails did smile and smile, the summer day beguiling. Two birds espied them from afar, and now the birds are smiling. The Royal Grotto A king and a queen in a grotto are kissing as kings and queens ought to. If you look, you will find, two attendants behind, to watch and to guard is their motto. The Modest Miss Kangaroo Two kangaroos upon a pole were talking softly to each other. One whispered, Dear, upon the whole, I think you'd better ask my mother. The Gargoyle A gargoyle here you see. I've heard it said that he was found in France by strangest chance. But what is that to me? I only know that we discovered him to be a lump of ink. And so I think he's ours, as you'll agree. The Elf Party These four little two-horned elves are seated on coralline shelves. The spot where they be is down under the sea, and they've got the whole reef to themselves. Unpleasant Companions Here are two wriggles from Wriggleum Town. Their legs are sky blue, and their bodies are brown. Their tails are a wonderful, changeable hue. I don't care to have them for playmates, do you? The Grenadier A soldierly fellow is he, with swords as erect as can be. His attendants are queer, and so small they appear, to barely reach up to his knee. King's Jesters Jesters from the court of kings tell their secret whisperings. Just a fleeting moment, then, they must hurry back again, ever making monarchs gay. Happy-hearted jesters they. The Funny Octopus A jolly old octopus lived in the sea, with a hey diddle hi diddle dum and the funniest sort of fellow was he, this jolly old octopus under the sea, with a mouth where the top of his head ought to be, to swallow the divers that come, this jolly old octopus under the sea, with a hey diddle hi diddle dum The Nymphs and the Ostriches Two pious little nymphs are kneeling here, two double-headed ostriches above them, and on their backs two gallant knights appear. Perhaps they'll see the little nymphs and love them. A Convenience The shadow rack stands in the shadow man's hall. It holds the shadow canes and umbrellas and all, the various things that gobelinks use when they go for a walk to get rid of the blues. Entomology These are some insects that dwell in the grass and nip at the gobelink's toes as they pass. Their legs are uneven, their bodies are queer, their habits are very uncertain, I fear. Fox and Geese Two foxes stole two geese one night, when the air was warm and the moon was bright. One started west, one started east, their hearts intent on a glorious feast. But alas, for the things that we hoped to do, a funny old man with pistols too came running out where the moon was bright, and they dropped their plunder and took to flight. The Tale of Taddy Pole there was a little pollywog, his name was Taddy Pole. He lived within a little bog, beside a crayfish hole. And all the day did Taddy play, around the sunken log, until he lost his tail one day, and then he was a frog. The Arabesque Oh, here are two doves in a bower, or a wonderful arabesque flower, or a knobby design for a sweet valentine, or reversed, tis a beast with a glower. The Gobelink's Mirror This is the mirror the Gobelinks use to do up their tresses in style if they choose, to do up their tresses and to look at their dresses and maybe to button their shoes. Wind Maidens here are two maidens of the wind, whose dresses are strangely designed. They appear to be made without buttons or braid, and fastened together behind. The Pugilists 
the pugilist craze is such that e'en the gobelinks absorb it. These pictures don't amount to much, but they were made for Fitz and Corbett. What they left. Oh, here's to the poet that sings the song of the gobelink kings who left silhouettes with their kindest regrets and other quite wonderful things. Gobelink horses. These are the steeds that the gobelinks use. They love them and pet them and never abuse. Their backs are not pleasant to sit on, they say, so they ride them erect in the hippodrome way. Miss F. M. Delisle. This is a damsel who dresses in style. Her name is Miss Fanny Magruder Delisle. She loves to look pretty, as most of us do. That's why she's so stylish and dignified, too. Fanny's Curling Tongs. These are the irons with which Fanny crimps her fair auburn tresses whenever she primps. She curls and arranges her locks with great care because she is proud of her radiant hair. The Bears and the Harlequins. Gay harlequins dancing, beribboned are they, and carry two poles in the air that rest on their heads in a curious way. And top of each pole is a bear, I declare, a wonderful long-tailed bear. The Faithful Notes An old guitar once broke its strings, and all the musical notes took wings. They hurried away to lands afar, but two of them stayed with the old guitar. The Polite Collywobbles Very polite collywobbles are these. They hang by their feet to the branches of trees, while a hand they extend to a wobbly friend, and often they say if you please. The Brave Warriors Two Indian warriors got frightened one day, and fled from the mist of alarms, and later they met in a curious way, each bearing a goat in his arms. Steeplemen. Two funny old three-legged gnomes came out of their shadowy domes. They made their salute with a hand and a foot, and then hurried back to their homes. The Sheet and Pillow Party. A pillowcase party the gobelinks gave, and it proved a right merry carouse. But I'm sure you'd have laughed at their attitudes grave as they made their ridiculous bows. Mossbacks. Here are two scraggledy racks, with moss on their beautiful backs, the sort that you'll find on such of mankind as fail to keep up with the facts. Oh, what is it? There was an old man of high feather who said, I really can't tell whether I'm a man or a mouse, or the roof of a house, so much may depend on the weather. The Merry Water Weedles Within the caverns of the sea, two water weedles stay. Their hearts are happy as can be. With the caverns of the sea, they sing and frolic in their glee. Throughout the livelong day, within the caverns of the sea, two water weedles stay. A Narrow Escape Two piggies went to market, all on a market day. But when the butcher caught them, they'd wish they stayed away. Oh, piggy wiggy, fare you well. Our ribs will soon be spare. And they quickly ran away, and now they don't go there. The Captives Pray tell us, if you please, what sort of things are these? A shadow ghost has captured them, and holds them fast with ease. The Vicious Gollipops here are two gollipops, looking for lollipops, such as grow under the sea. Their ways are ambitious, their faces are vicious. I'm glad they're not looking for me. The Divers Two divers one sweet summer day went down into the ocean. They saw all the fishes at play, the sea flowers all in motion. They danced a jig and sang a song and gathered water roses. When lo, two lobsters came along and bit them on their toeses. The Shadow Harp 
This is the harp of which nobody sings. Where is the keyboard and where are the strings? The strings are undone and the keys thrown away, for this is the harp on which shadow folk play. A Glad Return Two little maids, just home from school, have been so long asunder. They first embrace, then face to face. They stand and look and wonder. Grotesques Very funny creatures, these. Can't tell what they are. Men or birds or beasts or bees. Very funny creatures, these. Turn them either way you please. View them near or far. Very funny creatures, these. Can't tell what they are. Shadow Crests These are designs of heraldry that shadow folk affect, though some are no less shadowy than those that men select. For many men have bought a crest, although they come quite dear, and such as those as can't invest may find an emblem here. A Frontier Coat of Arms this is a crest that came out of the west, for the family was founded, where hunters abounded, so the head of the deer and two antlers appear. The Fanciful Elk This is the head of an elk as you see, his horns are as tall as a sycamore tree. They are strangely designed, and I think you will find, he has horns where his ears ought to be. The Other and Witch Ink bottle imps turn up their noses when they meet each other, and the reason I suppose is, can't tell which from the other. Cathodes And here we have a lot of things defying nomenclature. The bones of gobelinks are they, revealing in the cathode ray their anatomic nature. Cathode In the X-ray. Cathode fairy, light and airy, sunny weather, two together, caring nothing why or whether, flesh or blood or bone or feather, shows on such a summer day, neath the cathode's magic ray. A Beetleville Dance. These beetles gave a party, and all their friends were there. The welcome was so hearty, to join the beetles' party. The Joodle and the Jardy came flying through the air. Oh, the beetles gave a party, and all their friends were there. Queen Beetle a lady queen of beetle land, attendants small on either hand. They walk or fly with equal skill. They fetch and carry at her will. I'm glad, I'm sure, that we have seen the beetles and their lady queen. Beetles. Gold Bug. This is a beetle that came from Matuchin. The plan of his house is likewise as Kuchin. King Beetle. Oh, a marvelous mind has the old beetle king, and he rules in a marvelous way. For he rolls up his eyes and commences to sing when his subjects go glittering by on the wing. And it's said that his notes have a powerful ring. When he chants at the breaking of day, they say his anthem at breaking of day. Our Pet The head of a gobelink tiger, with smellers arranged as you see. He used to reside on the Niger, now he is living with me. Good breeding. Most shadow people are polite and bow whenever they meet. For us to do the same is right, at home or in the street. The Washerwomen. There were some old ladies of Dundee who did all their washing on Monday. Then they shook out their clothes, till they dried, I suppose, to have them all ready for Sunday. A Marine Ball. Two lobsters and two seahorses one day came out of the wet. They heard a mermaid sing her song and danced a minuet. The Queer Mollusks Ridiculous mollusks are we, and dwell in the depths of the sea. Our bodies are jelly, and we haven't a belly in the place where our bellies should be. Sea Tulip Seaweeds 
within the garden of the sea are gems of beauty rare the starwort and the anemone and the ocean pinks are there oh these are dainty things indeed the mermaids keep in store but fairer still to me the weed that decks the ocean's floor whatever flower of earth we win however so fair it be twill not surpass those weeds within the garden of the sea names given are in use only in gobelink land Seaweeds, Icicle Plant, Towerweed, Giant Blue Stem, Prayer Weed, Comb Weed, Lynx Head, Monk Weed, Sea Chicory. Finnis. There was a gay gobelink known as McGinnis, but now he is dead, and we used him for Finnis. Or if you prefer to pronounce it Finney, we'll say that this gobelink's name was McGee. The end. Alright, I really liked that story. It was really cool, and I think I'll have to play that game of making ink blots and making up stuff. I think making up rhymes will be the difficult part. Seeing what the things come out as and, and making things will be very interesting. Thank you as always for listening, and good night.